Tracy and I just got back from a trip. We did a huge class in Reno and the most asked question was on pricing. A lot of questions came through on properly pricing your services in the salon. We're gonna try to tackle all of these topics right now on the Biz Talk. All right, Trace. Yep. So it was kind of a little unexpected because we were kind of, um, we had a great class in Reno. Yeah, it was, it was really good. It was insane, yeah. right, in a good way. And um, all of a sudden, you had one person ask about pricing, mm -hmm. and then you had another person ask about pricing. Then you had 110. <laughs> and then you literally, it got to a point where I cut my part, like my section on business and social media marketing a little short. And I wanted to give Tracy the floor so that she could talk to everybody and answer every question concerning pricing. I think it's important that we talk about this again because we've brought this up before mm -hmm. on a previous episode of the Biz Talk. And I want to get into more detail about this, specifically some of the questions that people asked from the class. Um, I think the big thing is just having an overall structure. I think we talk about that first, right? What is, first of all, what is your pricing structure? Let's talk um, fill, let's talk full set, let's talk nail art first. Your pricing, not the world's pricing, not the market's pricing, but um, just yours. What do you charge today? What would it be if you had your salon? Uh, full set, 90. Okay, and that's acrylic or gel? Acrylic or gel. Got I, it. I don't, uh, I, we've discussed this before, I don't uh, do different pricing. Mm -hmm. Some people do charge more for a gel. Um, I don't like to remember that many different numbers. And um, I want to put on the client what they need. Right. Because not everybody can wear everything. And um, I don't want them to make a decision off of price. Right, right. So um, I did it that way. Even with tips, same thing. If I don't really tip anymore, but I recommend people don't charge different prices for tips versus sculpts. Sure. So fills would be starting at 60. Okay. Everything, of course, is starting at. Starting at. Right. And then um, art. So any additional items uh, start at five. Right. Usually five to ten. So like five for glitters, mylars, confettis. Ten when I pull out the airbrush, right. liquid art. Okay, so I think this is kind of a big thing. A lot of people were asking specifically, how do you charge for art? And when you said five dollars, people were like, oh, per finger, or is that like for one hand? And your answer is per glitter. So let, let's just talk glitter, whatever it is. If there's three glitters on the table that I'm using, that's an additional fifteen dollars. That's for one finger, ten fingers. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's Correct. just if minute I pull it out, it's it's five dollars. It's five dollars. Um, that to me is you know we do a lot of pricing on how much our series that we do. It's extremely logical, and the best part is it's very easy for the customer to understand. So if they see a design on Instagram, yep. which is a lot of what we do on how much, they can kind of get an idea, I need a fill, um, that looks like there's three glitters in this, they can start adding up and understanding what they're going to pay. I think that's a really good place to be. The biggest, most important point of all of this is that you're charging for art. You're charging for art and you're transparent. Which Very means clear. you have to be clear to your client. Right. And consistent. I think consistency is very important. So what happens is people will say, I charge this, I charge, and then the client will come in and they're like, oh, don't worry about it this time. Yeah. And then, you know, and the, you got this inconsistency and then it becomes awkward. Right. When you want to charge them. So it's just a charge. Right. We had a question from somebody I thought was really interesting. But somebody, I remember somebody asking, um, what, you know, can I just charge one price for all my services? Like, wanted to really simplify it, right? I remember she was like... And I get that, I get that. Yeah, like, I wanna charge $60 
no matter what service I'm, if I do right. a gel polish or acrylic, and that way I'm just kind of, I just shut it and off. They know, and the client knows every time they come in. It's 60 but, bucks. It's 60 bucks. Right. Um, it really doesn't work. Yeah. And to be honest, I was horrified. I was like, <gasps> you can't do that. Anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. no. Jumping across the room. I almost did. <laughs> um, it, the reason it doesn't work is you just have so many different levels to things, right? right. And, um, and, and, I, and I've heard this before. The theory is kind of you're charging a dollar per minute. Right. It, it, it is the theory. And um, there are people that you can get done faster than others. And then there are services that are done faster than others. So let's say a client comes in for a full set and they're paying 60 and that takes you an hour, hour and a half. And then a client comes in and they're getting a fill that takes <coughs> you 20 minutes to 30 minutes to do. And then they're paying 60. You're it, no longer charging a dollar a minute. It does. Right? It does yeah. So, right. Or you're saying, well, it's a dollar per minute. So now I'm going to charge you 30. Right. It, yeah. It, it, it just... You have to have pricing structures, just like hair. Everything that has, you know, it's a haircut is this, a, a bang trim is this, hair right. color is this. Well, not only is it just like hair, but it's also not, there's, I mean, you and I were having this conversation afterwards. There's not one business in this, at least successful, I would say, business in the world that charges one price for any product, any service that you do. You can't could, have that. Could you imagine if you did that? That's the example that I immediately go to. I always go to us. What if we charge the same price for a glitter as we did a 32 ounce nail liquid? We would, we would not be in business today, by the way. <laughs> We'd be out of business very quickly. You yeah. can't do that, no. okay? And if you're currently not charging for nail art and you feel bad, you've got to get over that and you have to start creating pricing structure for your business. Just here's, here's something to, to think about. Every business has pricing structure. It's a business. Mm -hmm. You're running a business. You're a nail technician. You, um, whether you're, if you're in commission, then the salon is really handling the pricing. But if you're a booth renter, and you have your own station, location, room, suite, whatever it is, you have to have pricing structure for your business. It's your business. And it's, it's really hard. The biggest thing I saw, Trace, was a lot of people like, well, how do I make that change? A lot of people already were not charging for nail art, but the biggest question was, how do I do it? And, and I think you had some really good advice for people. So the first thing I would say is like, there's some people that are almost there and there's some people that are way off. Mm -hmm. And my advice is- And be, what are some examples of that? Like what's somebody that's almost there? What's, who's, what's somebody that's like way off? So maybe someone that needs to charge five, 10 more dollars. Okay. They're like, they're really close okay. to the pricing structure. Sure. They just need to do that little bump. That's, that's fairly easy. Going back to your salon and saying, I'm increasing my pricing $5. Right. That's, that's not too hard. Right. Um, cause it seems overwhelming to us. Like we think this huge picture of all of our clientele, you know, stop coming to us because we're charging $5 doesn't matter to you. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Right. But it makes a big difference to us. Of course. Um, but, and then you got people that are charging 20 or more less than they should, or don't charge it all for art and they're doing this insane artwork. Now we have a bigger gap. Now so we like, have a, a, you know. So like an example that somebody's charging $25 for a fill and they're not charging anything on top, any nail art, yeah. no add-ons, nothing. It's just yeah. whatever you want, $25 for a fill. Service for it. Yeah. yeah. And it's just whatever you want. Now we have, it's, it's more difficult. It's doable, but it's more difficult and it's going to take more time. Right. So for those people, I don't, I say, you're not going to go back and say, I went to this event with Habib and Tracy and they said I should be charging $90 for yeah. a full set and $60 for a fill and your price. No, 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 no. Please don't you do can't that. do that. You can't do that. Yeah. What I recommend is you go back and you increase it five, ten $10 and you start charging for your artwork. Right. 
just charging for your artwork will make a huge difference and we've talked about it before like eight clients in a day upsell of one glitter is an additional over ten thousand dollars a year yeah it can exactly it adds up um profit in a glitter pot is about it's huge it's huge it's a lot. Yeah, you know, I think it's in the. It, what do we say? Like five, six hundred dollars. It can be dollars. if you if you break it if down. You break it down. How yeah, much use you get out of that? It goes a long way. Um, so you got to start slowly, and 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 it's not. You Habib sits down in my chair, and I go, guess what? All the artwork I didn't charge you for, I charged you for today, and you owe me an additional thirty dollars. Right. It you have to be transparent and it has to take time so my recommendation is i don't text this information i don't email this information i don't hand them a flyer of this information when my customer comes in i have something really nice sitting here on my desk and what i would do is i'd say hey habib, habib um i wanted to just point out my new pricing structure while i yeah. pull the stuff out for your service yeah. please look it over this is as of the first of next month yeah. you give them a little notice so they don't you know you're not hitting them at that appointment right. that you shouldn't do that um, and then I mark you off that I notified you I know that you saw it you read it and and that's how you do it and you can you can even be like you know what I should be charging five dollars per glitter I should be charging five dollars per this but for the next couple months I'm running a special Four glitters for the price of two. Right. Whatever it is. Three, right. you know, but you start just making that mind change yeah. in your client's head. Yeah. I I really like um, the way you break that down, Tracy, and I'll tell you why. Because the type of business that you're in as a nail professional, it's face to face. If you text or email a price increase and then your client walks in the door and you don't say anything, <laughs> it's gonna be awkward. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be that awkward, like, you're not even letting them know. But then, you know, in a month, all of a sudden their price is different. And they're like, well, I didn't I didn't get it. And a lot of times text and emails go unnoticed or lost. Or, yeah, even you, a flyer you hand to them, they're going to say, uh, I never read it. I never read it, yeah. So, like, not that email and texting is bad, but I think the initial way to introduce a price increase, I think that's really great. Like, you need to definitely have that face-to-face -face contact and and like force yourself to have the conversation i hear people all the time they're like yeah. i'm too scared i don't want to say it everybody's gonna leave everybody's gonna leave you know what you need to get over that and like i used to be scared calling customers and collecting money you know what i mean that's like that's it's terrifying you owe us money send now you know and then i got really good at it i got really good at it i was terrified at the beginning You've got to just be able, you can say it softly, like, hey, just want to let you know, you know, my business, um, it's, 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 we're, we're going through some changes costs and go up. costs have gone up. Um, and so I, I do have to start charging for art and don't worry. It's not a major, major, major increase. It's a small increase. That's a great place to start. Yeah. And I think you can also offer different things, uh, such as looks. And then that way your your clients kind of get this understanding of like, oh, I can still have amazing art or beautiful nail, uh, nude nails with these combinations and still be at a very reasonable, you yeah. know, you have options for your customers. And then another thing um, is whoever walks through your door that's a new customer, that is their pricing. That's their pricing. They don't get the cheaper pricing for the month while you change. Right. It, that's the new pricing. You're just giving your your clients time to catch up to it. Correct, correct. It's vital for your business. If you are a nail pro, you must incorporate some type of pricing structure. Here's the thing, too. Okay, if 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 you're not if you don't have a pricing structure for your business, um, a lot of times, like let me let me back up here. If your customers understand hey, Tracy, she's got her pricing really dialed in. Like it's very clear, it's very organized. I know exactly what I'm paying every time I go in. The level of comfort that your customer is gonna feel because they know Tracy really has her stuff together. She's very organized, like she's, it's a real business. You have a certain level of respect for them and you're not gonna have an issue paying. If you go to, if I go to somebody and I'm like, well, how much you charge? 60. Um, okay, what about nail polish? 60. What about acrylic? 
6D, honestly, as a consumer, I'm gonna go, that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. why are you gonna charge 60 for nail polish and 60 for acrylic? Like, I don't wanna go to you. Yeah. I would not. I would say this person doesn't have their business down yet. They maybe must just be starting. And um, it would be frustrating for me as a consumer. I definitely wouldn't go to them. Right. You know, I want I want somebody who's confident and who has their business sort of like really laid down. It's confidence. Well, and it is confidence. Yeah. And and I think people again think the customer is going to respond poorly. Customers are used to things being extra. I'm Everybody, gonna, the I, whole world. <laughs> I, I I take it always to pizza. Like I, I love pizza. <laughs> I just. I go in and I, I go get a pizza, and if it's a supreme pizza, I pay more. Yeah. If I want everything on it, it's more, and well, that's okay. Yeah. I want that. Well, what, what about when, when I when I go to Walmart, Tracy? Not everything is the same price. Like, <laughs> different products are different prices. Yeah. If I want, you know, a, a piece of gum, I'm going to pay a, a dollar or two or whatever. If I want to get, you know, a full-on box of donuts, which I'm not anymore, but if I did... I'm gonna pay more money. Like every business has pricing every structure. Business has it. it does. Whether you yep. get a pizza, you go to Walmart, or I go get ice cream, it's not the same for two scoops as it is yep. for one scoop. It's completely different yep. across the board. I think it's really important. And I think where the idea of sixty dollars an hour uh, comes in is that they know what they're making per hour, right? They're always making, generating this money, but not necessarily, because if you take longer, uh, it's just never gonna work out correctly. Right. Where we have to work on is getting our timing down. That's and that right. way, I, I tell people, I do not want you to charge per hour, but I want you to know how much you're making per hour. Right, because your, your real estate, your table should always be making about the same amount. Correct. And then that's where the timing and the technique comes in of Phil's taking, you know, a basic Phil taking 30 minutes and a full set taking around an hour. Right. Depends, you know, and then if you are adding a lot of artwork and adding time, then of course you're increasing the pricing. Here, here's, here's the test, okay? I want to end with this. I think a good way to know if you've got your pricing down is any type of set of nails you can go on Instagram and look at, you will know within pretty much 15 seconds how much you charge for that. Tracy has a formula, okay? I'm not saying charge 60 for fills and 90 for full sets yet. You can work your way maybe up to that point or, you know, depending on your market, um, it, it could be different. Uh, but overall, I know, I can ask Tracy, whether it's airbrushing, whether it's tip overlay, if it's slick pour, if it's dip powder, any question I ask her with any combination of nail art or anything that she's gonna put in the nail, she can tell me within pretty much 10 to 15 seconds what her pricing is gonna be. That's a formula for success. You've gotta get your pricing down. If you don't have it, please do. Anybody else, um, please share in the comments how do you structure your pricing? So curious to know. Obviously, this is our recommendation, but there's everybody has their own way. Would be very curious to understand how you go about your pricing. And if you also need help in this area, you can hit us up in the comments and we will answer. And with that, say thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next week on the Biz Talk.